Okay, so I forgot to record, so I should probably go back and say, okay, let's say you have a matrix B and P and P inverse are inverses. Therefore, if A, if this is the case, that A and B are related in this way, A and B are said to be similar. So let's look at how the eigenvalues of A and B are related. Well, here's the eigenvalue equation for A. And then if we substitute the right-hand side here for A, we get this form. And we're going to multiply both sides of this equation by P inverse. So that's going to be P inverse times P B P inverse V equals P inverse times lambda V. Well, on the right-hand side, the, the, the number lambda just comes through. That's going to be lambda times P inverse V. And on the left-hand side, I can group together this P and P inverse, and that gives the identity. So I'm just going to get V, P inverse V, which if I write this as V acting on P inverse V, that equals lambda times P inverse V, which means that if lambda is an eigenvalue of A with eigenvector V, then because A and B are similar, Lambda is also um, a, an eigenvalue of B, but with a slightly different eigenvector, with eigenvector P inverse V. Okay, so the point is, similar matrices have the same eigenvalues. And the eigenvectors are related, but they're not the same. It, in fact, what it, what it, what, what it turns, it's going to turn out is that you can think of the eigenvectors as a basis for a vector space. And both A and B are really the same matrix, but with a different basis for that eigenspace. So it's, in some sense, what you're doing is you're using P, because remember, remember a, a, a vertical matrix is an identity transfer, is a change of, also acts as a change of basis matrix, so that as a result, we can say that A and B are, are, are matrices with the same eigenvalues, they act in the space of the sort of eigenvectors but with different bases. So we're not going to go into that a lot, but, there, but there's some deep things about how, you know, in some sense, A and B are the same matrix. They, you know, in terms of eigenvalues, they sort of have the same, since we're looking for eigenvalues, they, they have the property that they have the same eigenvalues. That's just the nice thing about them. Um, now, let's see. And go through and, and, um, and go through and demonstrate that, that they have the same eigenvalues. Okay. Um, there's something here that, that, let's see. Okay. Let's look at some. Let's look at another special case of a matrix. A special case here. Um, let's say we have the matrix. Um, 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 say five, six, seven, zero, eight, nine, um, zero, zero. Four, okay. So this is this is the matrix U. It's upper triangular. Okay. Well, let's look and see how what its eigenvector what its eigenvector equation is. Well, it's going to the the characteristic polynomial will look like determinant of five minus lambda six seven 
zero eight minus lambda nine and zero zero four minus lambda equals zero. Well, in this particular case, we can use our results to say, well, we know that this is an upper triangular matrix, and therefore its determinant is the product of diagonal entries, right? Therefore, this equals five minus lambda times eight minus lambda times four minus lambda equals zero. So the eigenvalues are just the diagonal entries. Four, five, and eight. So for any upper triangular matrix, you, you, you can just read off the eigenvalues, right? So that so you don't you don't have to you can just read off the eigenvalues in particular diagonal matrices, so, and then you have to go through and um, um, you have to go through and um, um, find the um, anyway. This is just the what's going on. Okay. Um, you know, and this makes it clear also that if you choose one of these values, that's the thing that sets the determinant to zero. That's the thing that makes it not invertible by choosing lambda to be one of these four values. Uh, oh, I guess the point would be that um, the it would also work for lower triangular matrices and for diagonal matrices because that would just be the same thing as the upper triangular matrix where these entries were zeros. However, if it's, there's still, a, there's still these values are still gonna appear in the eigenvectors. So even though it's easy to get the eigenvalues, you still have to look at the, the, the system for the eigenvectors uh, to see how they work. Okay. Um, let's see. Well, there's a, there's a, um, let's, here's some problems here. Like these, these are matrices that have eigenvectors and eigenvalues. Um, let's see, we only have to have, let's, and there's some other ones here. That these, these, um, what, What's the if you notice these three problems here, they get they tell you the three by three matrix, but they tell you one of the eigenvalues. So if you know where the the problem is that you're you're you've got a, a polynomial, you've got a, a, a complicated polynomial, and the question is how do you how do you uh, get the characteristic polynomial? So helping you out by giving you one of the eigenvalues so that you could then know. Where, well, you have polynomial, one of the factors here is going to be x plus three. So that means that the characteristic polynomial has to divide evenly into x plus three. So presumably that like, you could do line polynomial division and find the other polynomial. A simpler method would be to just put um, lambda in here and use wx maxima to just find the characteristic polynomial and find the eigenvalues. So They've made it so you can do it by hand, but you can just use these as examples to to with, to practice with WX maximum. But right now, since there's only a little time left, um, let's try to see if you can find the eigenvectors and eigenvalues of M equals zero one one zero. 